Hi everyone! Hello! Hi, welcome to uh, checking out the YouTube version of uh, Cinematic Autopsy. Um, we've noticed a lot of you are watching and have not subscribed. Yeah, so, um, please it would, subscribe. Yeah, before we begin, it would be wonderful if you guys could click on that little link right there. Right, See where I'm pointing? Pointing right there. And um, you'll notice that if you scroll down, you'll see subscribe. So subscribe to us, uh, CL Squared Productions. You'll be able to see our uh, videos, uh, you know, stuff. We, we have lots of cool yeah, content our trailers. for you guys. You'll know everything yeah. that we're up to in the exactly. film world, whether we're talking about it or doing it. Exactly. So let's give you five seconds to subscribe. All right, everyone. We'll see you guys soon. I have diarrhea there you go yay <laughs> i was just i was uh, chelsea is actually actually doing the podcast on a bucket as we speak so if you hear yes i am iggy pop yes i was telling her the story about iggy pop and how um you know back in the days when people just used to take every random drug that was just handed to them um which you know i mean I guess people do that now to a small, way smaller extent. Like back in the day, it would just be like random pills. Yeah, sure. I'll take that, you know? And, yeah. and now at least it's like, okay, well, at least I, I kind of know what I'm taking and I might, you know, not me personally, but you know, other people yeah. might say no. If someone's like, you know, Hey man, take, I don't know, the fucking Flocka with, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, mixed with ayahuasca and fentanyl, you know, like it's... Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, back in the day, you know, Iggy Pop apparently thought he was taking mushrooms that someone in the audience was giving him. And it turned out to be x uh, <laughs> which, as I was saying to Chelsea, I don't understand because you paid money to go see the show. And if you're giving the fucking singer x lax well, most shows, that's going to be the end of the fucking show because they're going to run off to go shit their brains out, you know. <laughs> but since Iggy Pop is the fucking god of fucking rock and like to me, Iggy Pop, like I've 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 I, you know, I've invoked Iggy Pop when I see vocalists who I think suck. Um, Good. Yes. And um you know, so he just went and did the whole show like squatting over a bucket. <laughs> and, a lack of the day, I do not have any buckets. Yeah, well, see, I have buckets, but you know, I'm, I'm sure you do have buckets. Yeah, no, <laughs> kids, kids, if you're gonna take random pills, first of all, don't. And <laughs> second of all, there's a free app called Pill Finder, and you type yeah. in like the shape and the color and like the lettering on the pills, and it'll tell you what it is. Technology. I don't just does it allow you to just um use your phone camera and um oh. take a picture? No, see that would be really effective if it could if it could do that. That yeah, that probably I mean it probably does exist somewhere. Yeah, because yeah. that would be a, yeah. But like seriously though, it's kind of crazy. Like even even in the fucking early nineties, I would see you know people who are just like whatever that guy is a handful of. I'm just gonna take. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind, dude? Like, yeah, Jesus crazy. Christ, you know? So, yeah, anyway, so I have just woken up, like, literally five minutes ago. I, As you can tell, I look like shit. I have, take, I have a migraine I have taken medication for that will not kick in for a little bit. And but he knows what medication it was. <laughs> yes, exactly. I did not just have a random guy hand me medication. Um, <laughs> a random guy doing it in your apartment, Joe. Hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I like to, I like to experiment. No, but um, but, but no. Oh. Um, <clears throat> speaking <clears throat> of experimenting, uh, this for those of you who are not on. Oh, by the way, we have a Facebook group now. Uh, those of us, those of you who want to just look up cinematic autopsy on uh, Facebook to find out uh, upgrades, uh, not upgrades, updates, whatever. See, I'm sleepy. Um, 
And you can uh, find out about, you know, when you're like, hey, they haven't had an episode in a week. What's going on? And you can find out from us. Um, in this case, we were so gonna... I'm on a bucket and you yes. have your head in your hands. It's just yes. put photos of us and what we're currently doing. And it's just yes, me exactly. Bucket. Exactly. And you cry. And, <laughs> yes. Um, I only, I not cry. I only cry when I watch Avengers Endgame. Um, <laughs> he does. I have seen it. Oh yeah, no, it's super. I, I'm, I, I'm, I will actually will watch that movie purposely if I want to cry sometimes because like it's a really good emotional outlet. Um, but uh, also Spider Man, um, No Way Home makes me cry too. Um, that I don't think. Yes, you have. You you own it. You actually paid for it on Amazon. It's the one with all the other Spider Men. Oh yes, I have seen that. I yes, saw that with you. And, yes, and you cried too. Um, well, I cry every day. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but speaking of crying, so we were going to. Uh, you might notice that this episode is marked Hellraiser, and yeah. uh, we uh, were going to uh, watch uh, the invasion. The uh, we were doing invasion of the body snatchers, and uh, we're going to watch the two thousand seven invade the invasion, which was the Nicole Kidman remake of it. Um. Only to discover the movie. Okay, so in that version of the movie, um, the dogs can tell if you've been converted. In other movies, dogs get converted too. In this one, they 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 don't, but they can tell if you've been converted. And so, a lot of char- a lot of characters when they get converted, uh, like to murder them. Yep. So. The movie, like within the first five minutes, there's like a really graphic description of a of a guy killing their family dog, and it then there's another, and it's like, I'm not gonna watch a movie where there's just an graphic repeat. dialogue. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like, I'm less sensitive about that shit than Chelsea is, and even I was like, I'm not watching this. I don't want to fucking hear this shit. No, there's like, no way. I would spend like this whole podcast crying and yelling at Charles about making me watch it. So he gave me a did me a courteous office and didn't have us watch it. Yeah, no, the fact that I got angry about it and I'm like, it's, it's just been description so far, but if it spreads to the whole fucking world, I'm sure they're gonna show it and I don't want to fucking deal with that. Yeah, no, because dogs you know are the most incredible creatures on the planet and you don't kill them or eat them. Exactly. So, and if they they're the only like creatures on the planet that if they came up to me and gave me a handful of random pills, I'd take it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that'd be yeah. See now it's like the uh, it's it's like the rescue dog, but it's at rave. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Tina, avert your ears, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically. Um, what we decided was just to move on to what was going to be our next film anyway. Uh, so we moved on to uh, Clive Barker's uh, Hellraiser. Yes, which, which is, uh, I think of I think of Hellraiser and I think of it as like your favorite movie ever. <laughs> it isn't my favorite movie ever, but it's a huge influence on me. Although it's funny now watching it as like a, as, you know, also a first time filmmaker. Because um, this was Clive Barker's first film. Mm-hmm. Um and uh then he quit making films after his second one. Um but it's um it was interesting it's actually and the reason why he he made this is he was really hating the adaptations people were making of his short stories. Oh. Yeah. So he's like people, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, he was like well fuck it I'll just do it myself and um he ran into a bunch of um, of issues uh, that eventually made him like say, fuck it, I hate all of this, and I quit. <laughs> so, you know. What did he want to do with the rest of his life? Uh, just being an, a novelist and an artist. Cool. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, it's a very famous name, but I guess it's most famous for this. Well, he was... He was one of the reasons why he was so big was Stephen King actually gave him a big uh, endorsement and called him the future of horror in like the eighties. That'll do it. Yeah. So, and that's the thing is it's not like if Stephen King said that now, most people wouldn't really care, but like saying that in the eighties when Stephen King was at like the height of his like fame, like was a huge, huge deal. And one of the things is that like, 
you know, I mean, even as a, someone who likes a lot of Stephen King stuff, Stephen King stuff is very boomer centric. It's very Americana, very like, you know, there's always like a fucking dude who wears flannels and doesn't own a cell phone. And, you know, who's, <laughs> who's like the main character who's named like Stu, you know. <laughs> you gotta fucking, you gotta have a cell phone. How else is you going to go on pillfinder.com and figure out what he's taking? <laughs> There is an entire, an entire <laughs> book, I'm sure you're aware, about where the, the leads are all people who don't have cell phones. Okay, I probably own it. It's called Cell, <laughs> and it's, it's, oh, it, I it, do it, own it. it's the biggest, <laughs> boom, it. it's the biggest boomer shit ever, where it's like, you know, the whole world becomes zombies because they have cell phones, except for this, like, you know, group of, of like, uh, several hundred people in Maine. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It's probably just about Stephen King's life. Yeah, no, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it was probably him just being annoyed that his kids have cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and him being like, you're all a bunch of, you're acting like a bunch of fucking zombies with those things. And then blah, blah, blah. You know. Um, yeah. It's really funny, too, that I think about it. Like, how I remember going um, on a date with someone and being really offended when she kept checking her phone. And now we just all do that. Yeah, what is that? I saw this meme the other day that was like, you know, people telling you to like look up, like you know, look up away from your phone. But if you look up away from your phone, you're still be looking at other people looking at their phone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing is like we manage the time better now. Now it's usually like we'll have conversations and it's like, oh, my phone's hold on, give me one second, blah blah blah. blah. All right, great. I remember this one. This was someone just like looking at it while talking to me, and like that really offended me. You know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, also, uh, just want to, uh, point out, uh, you can, con you can contribute to, uh, my Patreon and help, uh, the cause, speaking of, uh, of, uh, filmmakers, um, you can, uh, contribute to that. That's, uh, patreon.com slash Charles D. Lincoln, one word. And, uh, Chelsea there's got a, uh, cameo. I do have cameo. You can go to cameo.com backslash Chelsea dot Lesage. Yes. There you or go. Just open the app. It's right next to Pillfinder on your phone. <laughs> and it's going to be great. <laughs> there you go. I'll so, you. so speaking of Pillfinder, let's go to uh, Hellraiser. <laughs> that was that was the original title, of course, was uh, yeah. Pillfinder. No, actually, it's, uh, yeah, originally it wasn't a box. It was just Frank t ingested a bunch of random shit that he was handed at a, at a rave. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and he thought he was uh, torn apart, but he's actually just like naked in the corner, like pooing himself. Um, the corner, naked and pooing. <laughs> you know, but um, uh, actually, no, you know, the, the working title of the film was Sadomasochist from Beyond the Grave <laughs> when they couldn't think Is of a serious? title. Yes, that's what Clive Barker was was internally calling it before um, before they uh, uh, they came up with the title. Because it's based on his um, short story, The Hellbound Heart. The Hellbound Fart? Heart. Heart. <laughs> it makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. But, um, so we go to, um, it opens with, like, the old school uh, New World Picture uh, logo. I watched this on Amazon. Where, yeah. um. It had a thing I've never seen before where it said it has frightening scenes. Did it say that? Yes. It had like set, uh, nudity, violence, language, frightening scenes. And like, that's the most fucking subjective thing they could possibly put on, on like a, like the TV M warning or whatever. I missed that entirely. God, that's, that's fun. Yeah, it made me wonder how many oh, other like you know. Now I will. Now I want to just watch the beginning of Saltburn just to see what it says on there. For uh, <laughs> you know, if you um, haven't watched Saltburn and you really like Milky Water, please watch it. Yeah, it's um. I'll I'll you know. Here's what I'll say. We're, since we're talking about a movie that was made by a very kinky person, um, and uh, you know, and that's the thing. Clyde Barker um was like very big in like the gay leather scene in um London um in the 70s and 80s. Um, you know, he's he's very open about his um uh you know his participation in uh, BDSM and stuff, which I which 
is wonderful. It was one of the things that helped me be very open about that, you know. Um, but he also was closeted at the time that he wrote this. And if you watch Nightbreed, Nightbreed is 100% a movie about a closeted person trying to find their own, like, forbidden um, society where um, the normal people go out of their way to try to destroy it. Um, I have to watch it now. But what I was going to say is um, for anyone watching Saltburn, I just want to tell you, it's a good movie. Don't go in expecting number one. Don't number one. Don't go in expecting the fucking kinkiest, wildest movie you've ever seen. Because I've heard people say that shit. And all it does for me is like, wow, you were so vanilla. If you. I, it's like people who said that Fifty Shades of Grey was like groundbreaking. And like yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Um, and it's really uh, well. It's a really well done film. Yes, it's a very well done movie. Great acting. Great performances. Um, it's not. I wouldn't even put it on my top 10 of 2023, but it's not a bad movie. Yeah. We're also talking yeah. about Saltburn, not Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> Fifty Shades, you know, and it's bad fucking <laughs> Twilight fanfic bullshit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, although, although I will always, always, always uh, go. And we talked about this on the Suspiria remake uh, podcast with Maeve. Um, about how highly amusing the interviews are with uh, was Dakota Johnson who was in that, mm -hmm. and how much she hated her fucking co-star and and just the fucking friction between them when you see them do interviews where she'd be like correcting him every three seconds, and like, yeah, yeah it's the type of thing where it's like you know, okay, yeah, hey, uh, you know, anyone who hasn't done an occasional grumpy interview. <laughs> You know, don't raise your hands, but, um, you know, um, but like, you know, we're friends and we've occasionally like, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. people have caught us in a bad, a bad mood or like mm -hmm. in the middle of an argument or something. This is every single interview they've ever done. That's really They funny. clearly do not like each other. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. That's it. Yeah, that's interesting. And you notice how no, no, no one knows his name. Yeah. Yeah. I want to I want to point that out by the way. So I so you said you think this is my favorite movie. I love this movie. Fucking Kirsty's boyfriend. I don't until his name appeared on the little fucking thing on Amazon that tells you the who who plays what. I yeah. have never known that character's fucking name because he's a fucking nothing character that adds nothing to the movie. They don't say his name. Yeah. Until the end, the very end, they say it once. Yeah. And I already lost it. What is it, Steve? Steve, yeah. But oh, he's such a Steve. he's such a nothing character. Yeah. He he does not add anything to the movie. In fact, I kind of love at the very end of the movie where he's he starts fucking trying to tell Kirk Kirsty how to solve the box. Yeah, it's such a mansplaining move. Yeah, but I love that she tells him to shut up. <laughs> but but he like fucking is like, no, no, do go, go like that. And she... <laughs> you know, <laughs> good. good. And love how he also just randomly came out of nowhere too. Like he said, this fucking dinner scene, and then you're just, oh, I yeah. guess we're together now. Yeah, yeah, doing well, his like cigarette, you. doing his like stupid cigarette trick, and she has the. My God, she has the, the expression that that she has when she sees him do that cigarette trick is like they need a fucking mop under her chair or something like <laughs> Ashley. Like, I don't I, you know, Ashley, jo Ashley Lawrence really learned how to look horny in like her. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. it's funny actually. I, I um so her audition for the she plays Kirsty Cotton, the uh, lead character. And um, she uh, talked about her audition. It was her first movie ever. And uh, Clive Bark, she went in there and Clive Barker for her audition was just like, all right, so here's the situation. Your uncle is wearing, is killed your father and is wearing your dad's skin. And now he wants to kill you and fuck you. Go. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, and that was my audition, and like I had to like react to that, and and you know, I do like I do like that he basically just summed up what she'd have to be dealing with as the uh, as the character. Yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. It also yeah. took me forever to fucking to fucking realize that it was Andrew Robinson. 
Yes, I know. I remember how was it was it for Errol which you wanted to get his um a picture yeah, with him some, when we did the convention. I got a picture with him because of Deep Space Nine. And then, did, yeah. and then was like, oh, like I kept looking at Larry. I kept writing down Jason Marr, who's like the, he was, Jason Marr was my freshman year acting teacher in college. And because he looked just like him, you know, he looked yeah. just like him. And I think Julia, that actress, looks like Rizzo from Greece. So I was like, Jason Marr and Rizzo walk into this house. And, uh, um, but, and then I was like, oh my God, it's fucking. Fucking Andrew fucking Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> no. It's not like the credits that it hit me. <laughs> yeah, Claire Higgins is Julia. And um, Claire Higgins is like a very respected English actress and stuff. Yeah. And, you Definitely know. Definitely not Rizzo from Grace. <laughs> no, no. And of course, um, and, and you know, it's also interesting. When you, when you watch the intro, Doug Bradley doesn't even get a fucking uh, uh, a billing. No, he doesn't. I was like, I was yeah. Talking, I was like, where's Doug Bradley's name? What? Yeah. Funny thing about Doug Bradley, Doug Bradley actually talked about how, do you know what role Doug Bradley said he would have preferred to have done? Uh, Frank. No, one of the two movers. Are you serious? He begged Clyde Barker to cast him as one of the two movers because he didn't want, he was like, it's my first movie. I, I've just done like Shakespeare and stuff before. If it's my first movie, I want people to see my face. Oh, I and, remember yeah and and he and he was like you know um he said okay they were not going to cast me as frank or or larry he goes i would have literally taken any other male role if they had offered me it and now it's like the thing he's known for for the rest yes of the yes yeah. he even admits he's like i would have been dead wrong if they had actually done that for me but mm -hmm. he said yeah that he had actually begged clive barker don't cast me as as the fucking lead cenobite who wasn't even called Pinhead at the time. That's a name the fans gave him that eventually just got adapt adopted. Oh. Um, yeah, he's just listed as lead Cenobite in the uh in the credits. Interesting. Yeah. Um God damn. Yeah. So um and it's what's also really funny too is um Clyde Barker, when he wrote this, he imagined Julia would be the franchise character. And I don't understand that at all. Yeah, no. Like, I would I not want... forgot about her. Yeah, like, Julia shows up in part two, and he wanted her in part three, and she said no to the role, but it's like, Julia is not the franchise character, Clive. Like, Well, it was interesting, too, rewatching this, seeing, you know, that fucking Pinhead shows up, and, like, and barely fucking talks, and winds up being mm -hmm. the franchise character. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, you don't even, Pinhead's not even the first Cenobite you see. It's actually the female one, which yeah. is, that's what her, literally her name is, because they don't give her a name in the film, is she female Cenobite. She has like four lines. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So perhaps we, perhaps we, refer, we prefer you, you know, and yeah. where are you going? And that's like her entire dialogue. Oh, and, uh, yeah. you know, um, yeah, no, that's her entire dialogue in this. All the dialogue I'm thinking of for her is from part two. Yeah. Um, yeah, because she has a lot more lines in part two. But um, yeah, it's really fascinating. So, um, you know, the, the casting process for this. I also watched an old interview with Andrew Robinson where he said he's like, people are either going to love this movie or hate this movie. And that's what I want to be part of. He goes, well, for all I know, this could be the end of my career, but at least I did a movie I liked. Um, That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. He's like the nerdiest fucking dude I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Like, he was such a nerd. He was such a typical, like, suburban dad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What's interesting is, so they filmed this in London, and uh, but the studio made them basically make it a more generic American setting. Interesting. Even though there's obviously still some accents uh, that slip through. Oh, well, Julia was English the entire time. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. It was who the fuck else was English who showed up? There was like, yeah. It was well, Doug, Bra uh, Doug Bradley's yeah. English. Um, I you was know. watching with a friend and they were like, they were like, oh, but everyone's English. This seems like such an American movie. I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, no, they filmed it in London. I, I think apparently the, some of the um uh like the, the under fives got dubbed um to make it more American. Oh well you can tell some of the ADR is not great. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, like a lot of the um, like I'm pretty sure the uh, movers were dubbed. <laughs> That makes so, sense. so Doug Bradley wouldn't even have actually had his voice on film if he had gotten the role that he wanted. <laughs> yeah, it would have been the, like the biggest mistake of his fucking life. And like literally, none of us would know who Doug Bradley is. Mm -hmm. Like, like Doug Bradley is now fucking royalty in Hara, and and had he gotten the role that he wanted in this, <laughs> I know he would have been done for it. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally, he's literally a legend. He's like one of the biggest people you think of when you think of horror. Yes, so. and 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 he didn't want the role at first, <laughs> and it's crazy because he brings so much to it. Yeah, you know, Clive Barker's original instructions for the uh, Cenobites was um, he wanted them to be uh, what was the exact words that he said to the uh, makeup artist? Because I love it. Um, uh, what was it? Um, Oh God! Uh, magnificent super butchers. Wow. Yeah. And repulsive glamour and horrifying but beautiful. Those were the things he said to the woman who uh, designed the uh, Cenobites. Wow. Yeah. And if I you look it. at them, you can see it too. <laughs> that's true. I want to be terrifying but beautiful. That's, that's all you can. Re I already did that. The, you know. <laughs> that's all you can want out of life. Yeah. No, yeah. they did a great job, that team. Yeah. Yeah. So we go to Morocco, um, which I only know it's Morocco because of uh reading uh reading up on the film. Because I have no idea what hot sweaty country that was. Um so right. yeah, I had no idea. I was like, yeah, what are you I, I was I would probably, talking about Morocco yesterday, but not like that. I would probably have known better if I was closer with my mom. Um because I told okay. Well, yeah, because you know, I told you my mom grew up in ever like every third world country like imaginable, mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of the things that like kind of separated us is that she kept like in my twenties she kept inviting me to go to all those places with her because I think she thought I was too spoiled and American or something, and yeah. I'm like, I don't really want to go to like the poorest countries in the world as like a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I get that you grew up in those places, but it's like, I don't need to not have indoor plumbing to know that, wow, people here go through so much more than we do. I hear Morocco is <laughs> beautiful, though. So, I'm sure. A like big, Marrakesh is. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I'm sure like the fucking rich areas are. Yeah. You know, a lot of those countries, like if you go to like the, you know, you go to Bangladesh, Bangladesh is known for its poverty, but there are super rich people there with the most beautiful fucking opulent, like palaces. They're not even mansions anymore. They're like palaces, you know, but that still me that's still like a country that has like actual, you know, I mean, they have they still have leprosy there, like, you know, because they don't have access to a lot of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, fuck that. Um, <laughs> sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, that's the thing is like they have such like a poverty rate that people are living in in those sort of conditions, and it's it's yeah. actually kind of disturbing when you think about the fact that every country that is in that just unimaginable poverty tends to have a fucking rich class. Yeah, who could fix it? <laughs> yeah, who could fix it? And like you know, live in palaces for, like, what, like, a million dollars American or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, um, so we go to Morocco, and we hear, what is your pleasure, Mr. Cotton? And, uh, you know, Frank gives him, this dude a ton of money. Everyone's fingernails are dirty. Um, oh my God, disgusting. Yeah. And take it. It's yours. It always was. It always was. I was like, this yes. is fabulous. Yes, what is your pleasure, sir? Um, which is from the very end of the film. There you go, I spoiled it for everyone. Um, so we then go to Frank. He's surrounded by candles, experiment with the box. Um, no experiment with a box. Every time the kid talks, I kept making it sexual. All my notes are really sexual. Yeah. About the box. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get into we'll get into how sexual the film was. And um yes. so Frank is basically my uncle with uh ch chiseled features and better hair. Um <laughs> Yeah, my scumbag uncle was pretty much Frank. Um, See, I would have fallen for Frank's antics. I, I was thinking about it. I was like, I probably would have done exactly what Julia did. 
Yeah. I don't know. Like, I probably would have. It's me. Would you, would you start murdering random businessmen, though, so that in the hopes that he'll throw a dick back? I mean, like... I, mean, I haven't been in that situation, but I'm not denying it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, I don't know. It's very different. Um, from, well, I guess I don't know. Larry is kind of like one of your uh, your your boyfriends of uh, that I have known. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you reminded me more of my dad. Oh, this is bad. This is really so, so bad. Yes. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> CBS kiddo. <laughs> so, um, and Let's get uh, the pills from CBS and they give them to a bunch of dogs. <laughs> There you go. So, uh, there's a, so Frank's playing with the box. There's a light behind all the walls and creaking in fog. The uh, Lamanchant uh, configuration, Lamanchant. Uh, sorry, and um, hooks come out of the walls, right. and uh, yeah. So then we cut to, um, and I like how the p time passes, and you can tell it passes, but it doesn't tell you time has passed. Yeah. You know, but we see like, you know, there's like roaches and rotted food and he has like statues, like, you know, phallic statues that are fucking each other. As one <clears> does. <laughs> yeah, Frank, Frank uh, left a lot of shit when he died. And I kind of like that. Um, <clears throat> so in the room where he died, there's hooks and chains and flesh and just the toys of hell. And then we see the first, we see the female Cenobite before we see Pinhead. And mm -hmm. then Pinhead's kind of just doing Frank's face is a little puzzle. Um, yeah, puts his face is a little, his little torn apart face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's one mm -hmm. of those things where it's like, it's not really a great practical effect if it were done now. But for the 80s, that looked fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know. One of the most interesting things about how this movie, I think, still t stands the test of time is that it's, of course, there's, um, you know, practical effects that are more more well done now, obviously, but it's still so terrifying. Yeah. But even despite it being so 80s, yeah. you know, it's still really scary. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring up the uh, lightning and stuff, which is clearly just drawn on the frame. Yes, it is drawn on the frame. I was yes, just... <laughs> which which looks awful, but it's like you know. It's... So I'm thinking about that giant, weird, like upside down scorpion monster thing. The engineer. The engineer. It's called. Yes. So he which, gets the name. <laughs> yes, which the fact that it's at, that it's called the well in the novel it's the it's uh, you know it's uh, eventually been revealed as it's the engineer. Okay. Um, but um. Yeah, but I do. I, I look at that thing and I'm like, what is that? Like, I guess an engineer of flesh or something. But, you know, what is it like doing? Does it plan out with like schematics, how you get torn apart or something? Like, Clearly, yes. It's it's an engineer. So, I mean, it has to be like kind of constructing something, you know. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, Pinhead, uh, he picks the box up and... Uh, Suddenly, the room is clean, and I kind of love that. Well, I just love how sexual he is with touching the box. Yeah. So well, like, he's Damn. he's he's literally. I mean, they are literally like fucking like S and M demons. Yeah. You know, so everything they do is a sexual connotation to it, which is one of the things that um they forgot about in the later Hellraiser films because you have just a lot of like very vanilla horror writers writing them. Mm -hmm. who don't understand the sexual content, like the pleasure and pain that they represent. Yeah. Like the last talk Hell... about the pleasure and pain. Yeah. Yeah. Like the last Hellraiser film that they made even has fucking heaven coming down and like opposing oh. them. And I'm like, you miss the entire fucking point of the goddamn films. There's like 8 million remakes too, aren't there? No, there's only one remake, but there's okay. 11... I'm sorry, there's 10. Uh, yeah. That's a... God. That's Clyde a Barker is only involved up to part three. Okay. Yeah. But he has to get, like, residuals and shit because the characters are his, right? Um, I don't know. No, he doesn't, actually. 
no. because they've lost the uh because um they went bankrupt and uh the rights to it got sold shit yeah he actually he has the rights now but he had to actually like buy them yeah yeah he had to buy them back he had to buy back the rights to his own creation that's really like your worst nightmare <laughs> yeah, yeah no it's something that it's something that like i actively try to avoid happening you know yeah. Um, but yeah, no, his production company went bankrupt and, um, all their shit got sold and the Weinsteins, uh, bought it. That's how we got Hellraiser 4, which we've already covered. Right. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Saddest the doorknob of what? Saddest of things. Yeah. So the doorknob rattles and Frank, um, I'm sorry, Larry, who is Frank's brother and his wife, Julia, are just trying to get in. Um, they're just arguing like a suburban married couple. She has the most 80s Marky Post hair ever. So 80s. Yeah. And so, uh, so I don't even understand what really the situation is here. Like, is like I guess it's just a house they've had in the family and he's just gonna move in. Um yes. it's kind of confusing, I guess, just as Take from like uh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like obviously maybe she was upset being in Brooklyn and this was the way of like trying to appease her. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only thing I could think of. And I love later when he's just like, can't be any worse than Brooklyn. <laughs> or no, like this work Brooklyn couldn't be any worse than this. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck he says. I love that so much. Yeah, I just think that she was like kind of an uppity cunt about I'm sorry, about um, <laughs> the, <laughs> about the whole thing. And just like kind of and she's even like uppity and like too proud to fucking like be living in this house too. It's like nothing satisfies this woman. Yeah. For some like it's... meat sack of a man. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I the thing that I kept thinking of is um she puts her cigarettes out on the floor, which is just fucking gross. I guess that like people used to do that. But I think that, like, when she did it that one time in front of Larry, like, that was obviously deliberate. Like, you picked this yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they, they start arguing and she just walks off. Yeah. Yeah. Not very nice. Yeah. And then they see all the food that uh, Frank was eating. It's now just a massive, like, mold and maggots and roaches, um, which were all male roaches, by the way, and they were American roaches. Why? What? <laughs> Explain to me the relevance. I don't understand. Oh well, Clyde Barker was talking about this. He was making jokes about how, like, they were the the roaches were all male and they went to leather bars together and stuff. <laughs> but um, he um, well, no, because here's the thing: is um, he was like, English roaches are really pathetic looking, and we got some of them, and uh, you know, they had a roach wrangler from you know when they shot in London. And uh, he's like, no, that's pathetic looking. I don't want that in my fucking movie. Like, I want, like, big ones and stuff. And like, well, you have to import those from America. Um, and so they did. They imported them from America. But you're only allowed to get males. Because if they get females, they're afraid that American roaches would start breeding in England if they got loose. Is there, like, are there, is, I didn't realize roach wrangler is, like, a job. It's 100% a job, yeah. It's crazy. I kind of want to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, Be Beatrice Beatrice actually has, like, the uh, Madagascar, like, hissing cockroaches because she's she's offered me them in three different projects and I've been like, nope, you are not bringing those on my set ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, in fact, it's actually mentioned in uh, one of the things in Bishop's Cove. I had a roach, and then when she asked if I should act if she should actually bring it, and, and I was like, you know what, no. <laughs> um, Good. Yeah, there's been great to deal with. I was gonna say, boy, Josh would have freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> He would have been like, well, they're already here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those would have fucking, like, you know, become the alphas of the fucking uh, of roaches. The and, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Take so, yeah. Josh's job as artistic director. The roaches <laughs> <do>. <laughs> so, yeah, Julia calls for Larry. Um, there's some very obvious ADR here because her tone is completely different when she, when he first hears her. Then on the stairs, where it's just a Larry, 
<laughs> and then when she's in the room, when she's freaking out again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. It's it's just first time filmmaker stuff. Like, you know, like I don't it's one of the things where if he had done like five or six films, I would have been like, oh, that's fucked up. But like I'm yeah. in for you know, I was I I'm I'm now in like the second or third time, you know. I guess I I still consider Bishop's Cove my first film, even if it's I produced and, and wrote Teresa and Allison. Um <clears throat> so uh yeah, and they see all of Larry uh, Frank's bedding and they assume it might be, you know, like first water. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's Frank is fucking is like statue is here. And uh, I love that. Like, that's the sign that they know it's him. <clears throat> yeah. I imagine the room smells like what my uncle's room used to smell like whenever he'd come visit when he wasn't in prison. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, my uncle was just such a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> so they think he's made this like one of his famous getaways. And then yeah. so the, the house is like in squalor, especially Frank's room, but the phone works apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a thing I was also puzzled by. Yes. The house phone works. It's really, and Kirsty, who is Larry's kid, answers the phone or is on the phone. So that's, I was like, huh, that's interesting. Like, I wonder if Larry ever called to try and check in on Frank. I don't think so. <laughs> He yeah. just shows up there. Also, like, imagine if Frank had, like, made a good life for himself and, like, he had, like, a wife and a kid and was inhabiting that house. Like, what if he was a different person? Larry and Julia just assumed they could just go move into that house. You know, I don't know. I've known, as I said, I had an uncle who's just like Frank and he had a wife and uh, kids and his uh, one of his wives uh, killed herself because he purposely addicted her to heroin. So that's usually what those people, you know, oh my do. Oh, God. Yeah, no, that's usually what those people do when they when they actually do have like a like I'll tell you when my uncle died, only one of his daughters mo- mourned. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um Damn. I'm there I'm there telling jokes like at his funeral because that's me when I hate you. Um and <laughs> uh you know, literally only one of them even told me to stop doing that. Oh wow. Yeah. Only one. So, of yes. You're yes, like this would be the test, and then yeah. and then the rest of them took a random pile of pills from your hand. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. No. Like, yeah. And I. I. That was the funeral where I greeted him with, uh, "You died first. Oh, so. Right. Yeah. 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 That uncle. Um. But yeah. Uh. So. <laughs> I get the feeling that Frank molested Kirsty. Probably. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot of awkwardness between Larry and Kirsty, mm-hmm. and also when Frank sees her, and not only is he all rapey, but he's like, "Remember, come to daddy." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so that totally makes sense. Yeah, and I I get the feeling maybe Larry didn't believe her or something, and now he's like, you know what I mean, like. And it explains, too, yeah, that explains to you why she's like, no, I want to get a room. Yeah. Like, I, can't, I need to do this. I can't move in with you. Yeah. The thing that also, like, timeline, pa- like, time passing that doesn't make any sense is she says she'll come visit in the next couple of days. And then same day, a couple hours later, she's at the house. <laughs> no, that's, um, they, they said that they would move in on Sunday. Uh... So that, so when they cut that Sunday, that's a few days later. Okay. I didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Where we see, uh, you know, the the moving men who are Jesus Christ, that one moving man, dude. He's just the horniest motherfucker I've ever seen. Yeah, no, he's 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 a fucking like I like, I assume in the eighties they had no HR department at this fucking moving company. He's just checking the shit out of these women. He's also a terrible mover. Yeah. <laughs> like I think that like there could have been like a like a forty five minute short film made specifically just out of them trying to get the bed up the stairs. Like, you know, and the how big of a part this match was. <clears throat> and the other thing I think of is I'm sure they wouldn't have cast Doug Bradley as that mover. I'm sure they would have cast him as the older one in the back, the one that you don't really care about. Yeah, that I don't that I I don't think gets. I think he gets one line. <laughs> Doug. Listen, <laughs> he learned his lesson. Yeah, you know, but I mean, the fact that movers are like, "Hey, do you have a beer? Do you have any beer?" And like, 
you know, they ask for beer and Julia obliges and they're allowed to have beer. And then yeah. they say to fucking curse you, they want to buy a beer. Yeah. But, uh, no, yeah. No, do you want to buy a mattress? Oh, do you want to buy a mattress? Yeah. When he's like coming on to her and like, hey, is that uh, your daughter? She's got her mom's looks. Her mother's dead. <laughs> her mother's dead. <laughs> I kind of love that exchange. Um, <laughs> when Larry just fucking throws them a goddamn six pack of Budweiser, too. Yeah. It's fucked up. You know, like, yeah, because because like they ask they ask. Um, I don't think we we've properly communicated how how inappropriate this situation is because they ask Julia while Larry is trying to help them move the fucking mattress up the stairs. <laughs> they ask Julia, "Hey, do you got any beer?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's in the fridge." And then everyone just looks at Larry and he's like, "Oh, well, why don't I get it? I got nothing better to do." I love I love that exchange too. It was so realistic because there's a like first of all is they- it. Is that really a thing that happens? Jesus Christ. Well, no, no. The thing is, is that, like, that's the thing that happens in relationships. Like, one person's obviously in the middle of something, and someone mm-hmm. else isn't doing anything, but still wants the person who's in the middle of something to go and do it. Okay. You know, okay. Like, like, Julia could have just gone and got the fucking beer, but instead, yeah. it's Larry, who's, like, literally pinned to the stairwell <laughs> by this mattress, <laughs> that goes... Like I was like, that's realistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that. we, so we, uh, anyway, we see, Kirsty, Kirsty, yeah, we see Kirsty but, walking on the walking on the water, but walking next to the water, not on the water. She is not Jesus. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, there's a fade to her coming to the house, and we see all Frank's um old. I guess it's Santeria, like that he practiced. Yeah, because so, it's all like right. saints and stuff, and then. Frank was clearly practicing some sort of like black magic. So I assume Santeria, Brujeria, something like that, you know, kind uh-huh. of without ever actually stating what it is. Yes, there um, are like I thought I had Jesus figures. This man has Jesus figures everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait. And mean meanwhile, Julia is looking at pictures of Frank. Uh, which we didn't we didn't talk about earlier that when uh she went through Frank's stuff, um she was like finding all these pictures of Frank fucking all these various women. Mm-hmm. And, and she keeps one. yeah, she keeps one and tears the head off it too. Yeah. That was yeah. morbid as fuck. Yeah. Um, she tears the head off the woman and keeps the Frank part of the picture. Julia. She's, I mean, like, she's married to Larry. So, like, yeah. 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 And we, <laughs> yeah, we, we cut to the flashback where, um, uh, the day that she met Frank, and he's in the rain, and she he's eye-fucking her so fucking hard. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I came for the wedding, you know? And, uh... Are you gonna let me in? You know? It's, it's so funny, too, because Frank is, like I said, Frank is totally, um, like, I, I 100% think of my uncle as Frank, and then I, I, I realize... If I were auditioning for this role or I was going to be in this film, they would cast me as Frank. <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, oh my God, I remember distinctly, I was talking to an interviewer off um, off camera about just like, you know, my before we did Bishop's Cove about how like, yeah, I would love to do, I have ideas for what my Cenobites would look like and stuff. And he's like, you would cast yourself as Frank, right? <laughs> That and I'm like, I n- don't necessarily know if I would, but that's who other people would 100 percent cast me at. You're like, I'm gonna be mover number two. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah. That's the I want to be the one in the back. I want to just be eating a sandwich while moving <laughs> the fucking thing. But yeah, no, like I that's the funny thing is like, you know, watching this, I'm like, oh, I know exactly how I would play Frank if I were Frank, <laughs> you know? Yes. And he's so you know. This is when he like whips out the dagger and stuff. The uh the switchblade and he cuts her uh her he cuts her bra strap off, which was a concession, actually. Clyde Barker had to had that it's funny, Clyde Barker talked about how um originally he spanked her and fucked her up the butt. Oh. And he was not allowed to have that in an R-rated movie. So so they had to um they had to actually reshoot it. And he goes, of course, they allow me to fucking cut her bra off with a, a fucking, uh, you know, a knife to imply rape. But 
you know, um, it's totally not okay if uh, if he thrusts into her ass. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that's Cl- and that's the thing. Clyde Barker has also said that he has no idea where this footage is either, which is a big problem with the 80s, too. The footage is just out there. Yeah, it's uh, no, I've never seen it. Uh, he He has no idea where it is. It's probably in someone's garage somewhere if it hasn't been thrown out. Yeah, no, totally. It's something that maybe will resurface once those people who have it are dead and they're like, yeah, offspring go and like are going through their house and they'll give it to like some weird like porn, porn store and then someone will realize what it is and how valuable it is and sell yeah. it for a ton of money and get rich because they're stupid. Yeah, because because there's you know like that's the thing like when they have um there's like the the scene where they're just laying in bed and it's only like for two seconds but. There is a lot more penis than you normally see in an R-rated film here. Yeah. Um, for the '80s, but it's only for like a second. Um, but uh, I guess I guess that might have been like one of the concessions that he had to make, where it's like you can either have, you can show Frank's testicles, or you can <laughs> have the butt fucking. Which do you which which do you want? And you know, um. <laughs> But yeah, it's funny, like, um, so Julia, Julia just is acting kind of creepy. Um, she goes off to the room. Um, and uh, I was saying, never mind a portal to hell being opened up here. I'd be afraid of the mold in this fucking room. No, oh, for sure. Disgusting. Yeah. Excuse you me, know. there's black mold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you know. You're a dead guy. Who oh, I want to fuck. Yeah, and I do yeah. love that Frank fucks oh, her on the wedding dress too. Oh yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> good. I don't know. This movie is just so fucking weird and fucked up. Yeah, it really. I good. mean, I mean, like I said, Clyde Barker. Clyde Barker was known for his eroticism and like, because that's the thing. Like once again, if we go with Stephen King, like Stephen King. His sex, his books have a lot of sex in them, but the sex is always like very suburban sex. Yeah, it's very like suburban, very masshole sex. You much my people. It's, but I mean, you know what I mean. It's like either it's either kids fumbling in like a car or something, or it's some guy who like is happy he can get it up with his wife tonight. You know, <laughs> like or like that same guy has like some random demon who like comes at him dressed like Marilyn Monroe or something and like blows him. And that's the most exciting moment of his life, you know, while like, and while like, you know, in Clive Barker stuff, um, you know, there's full on fucking bondage and, you know, all that sort of shit. And, you know, and it's, it's one, it's again, it's one of the things that I, I really, um, Clyde Barker stuff made me feel like, oh, it's it's okay to be a little bit, you know, fucking kinky. And I kind of love that. Um, yeah, it's good shit. Yeah. So, and this is all kind of intercutting with um with a uh, 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 Larry slicing his hand open um yeah. on a nail. Yep. Yep. And just He's gonna need stitches, apparently. Splashing blood all over the Place and... There's just like so much blood for that cut. I'm like, yes, yeah, so you think like obviously you need to go to the hospital if you're bleeding yeah. that much, sir. You know the and he he has a thing with 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 blood. He doesn't like blood. I That's smiled. Not... I smiled because you know me. You know me well enough to know that I'd have to be convinced to go to the hospital for that. Oh yeah, you wouldn't go to the hospital. For... <laughs> I I would just be like, it'll heal on its own. Let me just put some fucking hydrogen peroxide on it, and I'll be fine. The giant gaping wound. Yeah, it'd be bleeding that much. Like you know, hell, do you remember that time where I fucking sliced my finger open? Yeah, and it was just bleeding all over the place, and I was like, you know, and like we were we were you finding blood on please. we were finding blood near <laughs> like. Jade. Oh, on the blind. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I definitely even fix that. Your blood was on my fucking shades until I moved out of that apartment. Yes. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> I was bleeding that much, and I was just like, all right, well, whatever. I'll just put a bandage on. <laughs> on my blinds. It's, like, on my bathroom cabinets. <laughs> yeah, I'm just bleeding. I, I was... I don't know why it bled so much, too, because it was just, like, a fucking slice on my finger. I don't even have a scar from it anymore. And I but, just was like, and I just was like, 
you know, it was a couple of days later, and I remember thinking, what the fuck is all that stuff? And then it hit me. I was like, oh, it's just Charles's blood, and I never cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, uh, Larry's dripping the blood on the floor, and they go to take him to the hospital. And I was just like, God, Larry's such a pussy. He's such a like, pussy. But it's like, I can't even look at it. Oh. Andrew. And I I kind of love how Andrew Robinson plays um, later on when, when Frank is in, in uh, Larry's body. I love how Andrew Robinson plays him, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where he's like, you know, he he was, well, oh, my God. We'll get we'll get to it when we get to that scene. I, I might have it written down my notes. But so under the floorboards, we see the uh, deflated heart of Frank pumping. Um. The uh, family of rats that live there are very ups- are very upset um, by everything going on. Their house, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I imagine that like Disney numbers are going on when uh, no one's in that room. Oh yes, it's like fucking Ratatouille in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so and and then of course we get just this iconic Frank reforming. Um, which was almost entirely shot in reverse. Oh, was it? That makes sense. Yeah, like a lot. They basically had this model of Frank, and they destroyed it. And and like the rib cage coming to, together and stuff was they actually were like wrecking the rib cage with like a hammer, and uh, you know, and then they showed it in reverse, so it looks like it's all coming together. Interesting, because this is like absolutely terrifying. And it's so gooey, too. And just, so like, good. yeah, they said that it actually was really hard to pump, to, like, pump this stuff up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like, they said that, like, it, it actually ruined the first couple pumps they had, because the stuff was just so thick. Viscous. Yeah. Viscous yeah, fluid. I think I wrote <laughs> uh, viscous fluid. I did. Good for me. Yes. So we cut to a dinner party. Uh, where Larry is trying to sue someone, and yes. and we meet um uh what's his face um <laughs> Kirsty looks at with the I must fuck this man eyes oh yeah um yeah and um and I wrote I've seen this movie dozens of times and I can never remember his fucking name <laughs> Steve it's Steve yeah Steve. yeah. Steve. yeah. I, yeah, I have it, Steve, because I, I wrote it down here, but I will forget it after this podcast. And I'm sure <laughs> I, I, you know, they didn't even bring Steve back in part two. Like, I wonder if, like, the writers even remembered that this character existed in the film. Probably not. <laughs> you know? That there actor is, was like, God damn it, I had one shot and I blew it. Yeah, there is literally no mention of Steve in Hellraiser 2, which I've shown you. But like, yeah, the, the Steve does not even get mentioned as existing in the second movie. Um, <clears throat> Good, fuck you, Steve. So Julia's going to go to bed, um, and here's like where you get one of like the little just first time filmmaker mistakes where um, the lighting when she goes out the door into the hallway makes it look like she's going outside in the daytime. Yes, yes, it does. You know, which I just, which I imagine is just you know. First time filmmaker shit. We all mm-hmm. make it, you know. Um, she hears something in the uh, moldy room, and uh, Frank's in there. <laughs> in the moldy room. Yeah, yeah, and and I just keep thinking, Frank must smell terrible. Yeah, he's got to smell terrible. Yeah, it no always, that's, it. that's one of the things that always bothers me. Um, when people don't like in zombie movies, how like zombies will sneak up on someone. Yeah, no, you can't. You just smell that shit. Smells yeah, like shit. Um, it will smell like literal shit mixed with rot, like a fucking hundred pounds of rotting meat. How yeah. could you? It's like piss and urine and rotting meat is what a zombie will smell like. Yes. Like there should be never any time where one can sneak up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this isn't realistic. That zombie should smell bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we see rats crawling in what looks like vomit. And uh, and here we also see what an attentive husband Larry is, because she's grabbed by Frank, is clearly screaming. And no one fun. no one hears her. <laughs> like, Yeah, no, I'm like, that house isn't that big. Yeah. They well, that's, hear it. Uh, that's kind of what I love about the house. I like that it's realistic looking, though. Yeah. 
that it's not like so many movies have this big giant glacial fucking mansion that they shoot in and this looks like a real house where all the rooms are fucking small and it's very claustrophobic you know what i realized is that like on that top floor we never see what's in the middle door mm, Those true. Three doors. we never see that true what's in there yeah. clive uh dildos dildos Probably. named after a wrestler oh i'm sorry it's not vince mcmahon's house anyway um so uh, oh my God. <laughs> topical humor Anyway, um, so uh, Frank is there. Julia is obviously horrified that he has no penis. Um, yes. And uh, that's that's really all she's upset by. The lack yes. of skin. Um, and I like him, you know, please, please, God, help me. And I'm just like, I, my literal first response would be like, you know, I think you're a bit beyond help when you've got no skin. Like... Like, you know, Chelsea, I love you, but you show up to me with, you know, no skin and you're like, help me. I'm like, Wasn't it I, like realistically people die within like yeah, hours with no skin. About six, you know what, though? You die of, infec- of infection. Yeah. Yeah. You don't die of not having the skin. You die of infection. Um, and I think Frank is a little beyond that at this point. He has leprosy. Um, yeah. So uh, Kirsty's uh, wandering up the stairs very drunkenly. She's, I thought she was really bad at playing drunk. <laughs> You know, um, so um, the blood brought me this far. I, I need more. You have to heal me. And yeah. and once again, I thought, or what? You're going to what? Crawl down the stairs and tell Larry we had an affair. <laughs> or even that's one of the other things later on when like Frank is, you know, when they're worried that like Kirsty is going to call the police and say what? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's true. And say there's what? a fleshless my molestery uncle has no skin and he's hanging out in our attic. <laughs> you know, I mean in fairness, she could just say my molestery uncle is in the house, but she could. Yeah. Yeah. You but know, he's but so, he's so gooey and stuff, he'd get out of handcuffs, no problem. Yeah, I'm just like, what exactly is he worried the police are gonna do if they show up? Like <laughs> scream <laughs> like before he kills them? so you know (laughs) yes yeah so so, um we now go to um you know uh kirsty and uh what's his face are uh they're walking and we see this homeless dude is watching them yeah what's the point of this homeless dude uh it's in the wider hellraiser uh, mythology okay yeah um that they're kind of a lot of the homeless are kind of guardians of the box. It's like held within the poorest places by people who have no desire for it, mm-hmm. you know. But here, of course, the guy turns out to be a demon. Um, naturally, yeah, as one does, you know, as as most of the homeless actually are. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've I've been homeless, so I can make that joke. So I can make that joke. <laughs> yes, but um, <laughs> but I'm sure there's some right wing asshole who would watch this movie. See, I told you, <laughs> um, I told you, I told y'all them. But um, <laughs> so uh, God, La- and Larry's mumbling in his sleep while Julia is remembering what it's like to fuck Frank, like senseless. <laughs> and um, and I just kept thinking, I was like, you know what? Like, what the only thing they could have done to make him more suburban dad would have been to have him like snoring and farting. Yes. While she's like remembering just Frank being hot and like, you know. <laughs> so funny how like different siblings wind up so different too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so you know. So Julia goes upstairs. She agrees to uh to help Frank because she wants that D. Um, I I know Julia needs dead guy dick. (laughs) There you go. And uh, then we see Kirsty in a room full of feathers and there's a baby crying and blood under the blanket. And uh, she pulls off the blanket and there's someone who I is. I is it supposed to be her dad? I don't know. See, that's it wasn't it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a great um, prosthetic, so it didn't look like anyone really. No, it's just like under a sheet. It's an adult sized baby. (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know and now it's covered in blood oh yeah it is her dad when she picks up the blanket yeah 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 okay okay like because yeah. i was trying and, and and like you know and i wonder like i haven't been able to find out what it is but i wonder if like maybe she got pregnant from frank or something 
and had an abortion. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's all sorts of just different. There's a lot that's unsaid in this film. And I kind of like that because it does lead to um, people having to figure shit out for themselves, which yeah. no one's allowed to do in movies these days. No, nope, um, true. Yeah, true. But so she so wakes she, up and she's freaking out. And I love that they're in twin beds. Yeah. You know, Larry's apparently yeah. okay with her boyfriend spending the night. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, she calls her father on her old school landline, has to get out of bed. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Frank is uh, horny for Kirsty when he hears that it's her. Frankie boy, just like give it a rest for like another day. It's like, dude, you don't have a dick yet. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, Julia goes out looking like she's about to go to a fucking Eurythmics concert. Um, like she does, doesn't she? <laughs> like, the yellow blouse. Yes, I love and, that blouse. See, I wanted that blouse. So yeah, bad. hanging out at bars and picking up men, and the guys like it's not often. I and I, I want to just say this as someone who's had a lot of one night stands in, in my life. You don't have to say that because literally, do you know how many women have said to me, "Oh, I never do this." Come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna think any less of you. Okay. I've never, like, I've never said I've never I would I never do this because it'd be a lie. <laughs> yeah, no, but I've had I I lit I can literally say I've had dozens of women say that to me. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, like during my like slutty fucking like twenties and thirties, I, I had so many fucking women all the you, uh, you know, I never do this. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like you do. Because you know, <laughs> I fucked yeah. your mom. You know, well, I did not say that. I think, you know. You just implied it. Okay. (laughs) So um, that only happened once. Anyway, um, so (laughs) you know that story. Um, Yes. (laughs) Involving a certain church that we uh, shall not say so that they uh, don't sue us. I'll just say one of their uh, their leader's wife is missing. Anyway. um, (laughs) So. yeah, and uh, so the first guy, he does get kind of rapey, and he starts trying to, like, force himself on Julia when she is clearly uh, not into it. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Like, and, like, I was thinking about it psychologically, everything that he has to go through in order to do that. Like, it'd be like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this dude, but I'm going to seduce him, and having to come over, like, to having to deal with the fact that, like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to pretend to want to be with this fucking fucker. Yeah. You know, like how much psychologically is a woman she'd have to go through that shit said, monkey, please no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh is is monkey solving the box? What's going on? I mean, at least that put me out of my misery. <laughs> <laughs> so monkey, monkey is on my record player. So oh god. Fun. Well, yeah. I to- I told you what would happen when you got a cat, Chelsea. Yeah. She would be a cat? Yes. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what... When you added this cute little kitten that did nothing, and I was like, you know, it's going to grow up to become a cat, right? <laughs> hey, she's worth it. Yeah, so... um, Yeah, so this is... There's a very awkward shedding of clothes. Um, I don't know which one of the guys, but this is another concession that they had to make because um, one of the... Uh, one of the guys got completely nude and the MPA wouldn't let them uh, do that. So they had to reshoot it with him in underwear. Oh, is this whitey tidy man? I don't know if it's him or I don't know if it's the second guy. Okay. But uh, one of them, um, the actor was actually nude when they originally shot the scene. But once again, that's footage no one has anymore. Oh, God. Imagine um, seeing that actor being like, somewhere there's my nude body. I'm Maybe. sure he's... I'm sure he's just happy that number one, he was in Hellraiser. And number two, he got the fucking nudity bump. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, because whether they showed it or not, he still got paid for being nude. So, yep. yep. Yeah. You know, um, she me to get this. so she just basically she kills this guy with a hammer mm-hmm. um, and and leaves him to Frank and she leaves mm-hmm. him the end. And then she winds up like high, uh, hiding his body. While Frank is, or no, while Larry, who is singing while the Saints go marching in? I think that's Larry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he's starting to come. I'm like, God, don't sing that song. That's terrible. Well, well, that's, that's, that's next because um, I was just going to say, like, you know, he's gooey and drippy, but he can, after Frank kills the dude, 
He's like gooey and drippy and like um i wrote frank says not to look at him and she leaves the room because frank's gonna bone the corpse um <laughs> <laughs> and he's like he's gooey and drippy and he can walk now soon i shall have a cock which he doesn't say but you know yeah. <laughs> um, it's implied <laughs> um it's come here crazy. come here damn you i want to touch you come to daddy so creepy okay. yeah so creepy oh, i love it daddy. You know, um, which I, I keep thinking of the Aphex Twin song, which is clear, clear, which was actually very clearly inspired by Hellraiser 1 and 2. Um, the uh, come to daddy. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, I want your soul. Anyway, um, huh. so Larry comes home and here's where he is. Uh, oh, and with... I love that he dusts off the banister before putting his coat on it. Like <laughs> that little, I was like, God, I hate this man. <laughs> terrible so she's in the bathroom cleaning herself up she does a really terrible job mm. <laughs> at cleaning herself up um and she says that she feels sick um while larry is at the door and he's just so understanding and i love it she's like can i get you anything she's like a brandy <laughs> that would be me <laughs> yeah <laughs> and she cleans herself goes right back to frank who is hurting but his nerves are beginning to work again so he can feel things. He wants to be healed completely. Uh, and the Cenobites are going to be finding his shit out. He's got to get away from there. Um, we can be together the way we were before. Um, better than before. Like love, only real. And she puts his finger in her mouth, which is disgusting because he doesn't have flesh. But he is salty. And he is salty really and maybe, maybe even savory. Maybe, but that's how you kill him with infection by doing what you just did, you stupid bitch. I just, I will say, um, I like Frank's performance, although the "We Must Get Away from Here" is not a good line reading. No. So I wondered if that was another ADR one on there. Probably. Yeah. Probably. So we cut to Kirsty works at a pet store, and apparently during '87, you could buy a monkey at a pet store. Yeah, that was the thing I wrote about too. <laughs> <laughs> um, right what i guess i guess they stopped selling them when they murdered a couple of people yes well th also that's terrible but i <laughs> want one i need one thank god they, i named cat monkey <laughs> they will rip your fucking face off that's okay you know like no like they legit like have you seen the woman who fucking gotten like the monkey went crazy on yes. her and like yeah like Nah, nah. You know me, and you know how I feel about simians, and that's that's a big reason why. Because they will <laughs> fucking rip your, they will rip your face off and rape you. They will, le they legitimately do that shit. There are monkeys who don't do that, like mine. She just destroys everything. Because yours is a cat, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know what? The jury's still out whether she'll rip your face off one day. <laughs> can, you, can you not? She is peeing in one of my plants. Now I have to repot that plant again. Oh my God, I have a cat. Okay, yes. The, uh... <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> when she goes to bury her pee, I'm sure she'll do a lot of the repotting herself. So. Shut the fuck up, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, someone's the, mad uh, at the pet store. Yeah, Can't and then, the, and then the, homeless, the homeless guy wanders in. And eats a bunch of... Um, crickets. Crickets. Yes, so, which so, I think they are highly nutritious. You know, you know what I love about that scene is that the guy is clearly not eating crickets, mm -hmm. but if you cover your hand in crickets, and they do sound effects. Like, yeah. for me, I love that scene because it's such a triumph of what you can do in post-production. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and like, literally, literally just having a handful of crickets going like this, and then making chewing motions with sound effects put on it. <laughs> and we all are like, oh shit, that guy just ate crickets. The fuck? <laughs> oh shit, that guy just ate crickets. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah no, it's true. It is disgusting. Yeah. Um, and she tries to get him out, you know, and I'm like, let's got it. And he just disappears. Mm -hmm. He disappears into this beam of light. Every that Republican's sense. dream. <laughs> The homeless just disappeared. Um, so... <laughs> I can make that joke. I used to be homeless. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so. 
<laughs> I wrote I, my next note is English Eminem doesn't know how to die properly. I wrote uh, it was Eminem too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second guy that Julia sacrificed like, to Frank is Eminem. Yeah, and, that's yeah. the guy I wonder if he was nude. Um because he's in a, he's in like a t-shirt and underwear, and I wonder if he was nude when he died originally. Yeah, that would make Cause, sense. Because it seems more likely for him to have been nude than the first guy. Yeah, and he'll be like the real Slim Shady. Please stand yeah. up. Yeah, and then himself. get hit in the head with a hammer and you're not standing up anymore. As you do. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I do love, while he's getting murdered, Julia, who was all freaked out the first time, is just like smoking a cigarette. and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's sitting with her brandy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like one of those like things where after you kill the first time, it's like it gets easier, you hear, right? Yeah. So, yeah. One of those. So Frank uh, has the box now, and she's like, what is that? And um, he tells her not to touch it because it's dangerous, and it opens doors, doors <laughs> to the pleasures of heaven or hell. I thought I'd gone to the limits. I hadn't. They gave him experiences beyond limits, pain and pleasure indivisible. And I realized... God, if you can open a fucking portal to hell and you use it because you want to get off more, that's yeah. a waste. It is a waste. You're not like going for eternal fucking wealth or or youth or yeah. or fucking ruling the world. You're or 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 you know, buying Twitter. You're using oh, it to fuck, you know, like other people who open gates to hell uh, do. Um, <laughs> you're using it to fucking, I really want to get off more. <laughs> you know? I do know, pe- I do know people who would have done this. <laughs> you know? Like I mean, Kurt. well. Kurt would be Kurt. like, I've never been fed. <laughs> <laughs> Will Cenobites give me food? <laughs> <laughs> Then I will do it. <laughs> I opened the I have I opened the door to the to the ultimate in 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 culinary like treasure. It is buffet. Yes, <laughs> all you can eat buffet. It's yes, it's a dog dish that never empties. <laughs> Kurt, can you imagine I am Gert. <laughs> Gert would be like six times the size if if, if that was. Option for Gert. Gert would be six times the size she is now. She would be, She'd be able to get box. out of walks. <laughs> she would just I roll like <laughs> she would roll like down fucking hall. <laughs> you say hi to your fans. No. Do they have food. <laughs> so anyway, Julia's Julia's uh, Larry's watching sport because he's such a suburban dad. Julia is sport. I love how you bored. call it sport. He's watching sport. Like he's a sport Roman ball. emperor. <laughs> um, um, I thought this he's watching boxing and and he's like, I thought this kind of stuff makes you sick. And I do love her saying, I've seen worse. <laughs> I do love that. I've seen worse. I love that too. Yeah. So Frank is being a little bitch yeah. and basically makes a bunch of noise and is not adhering to anything whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, beggars can't be choosers. You literally need her help. Don't fucking. He's, Ooh, he, he he really is such a dude. <laughs> such a dude. I have no skin. I need you to help me, but I'm also not going to do what you tell me to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank. Poor Frank. Yeah. Can I so, eat Frank? So what I also, I also, here's the, and I love her excuse of, uh, you know, I'm afraid of thunder. And I'm like, um, I assume Larry and Julia have been together for several years now. Yeah. I and really know that. I get the feeling he would know if she was afraid of thunder, but oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> sure. All right, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a good off the cuff excuse, but I'm like, I would have come up with better. Yeah. So they start making out and Frank is in the bedroom. He comes out with his switchblade and he's like cutting up a rat and and I do you know the weird thing is I distinctly do not remember him doing that. I don't know if that was an extra thing if this is like a, a different cut that I'm used yeah, to. Yeah, cuz he would have told me. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's a very fake looking rat. Mhm. You know. Definitely. Yeah. Um so and then Julia of course kind of uh you know cuts him off because uh Frank is over the fucking bed 
fucking mutilating animals behind them. Well, you know, which yep. is definitely not a suburban uh, sex thing to have behind you. No, definitely, definitely not. Definitely not. And it's and, like he finally listens when she says stop and he doesn't understand. Larry doesn't understand because she was all horny and then she wasn't. Yeah. It's, like, it's your skinless, dickless brother behind you killing rodents. And not to mention, I'm sorry, Larry, but no means no. Yeah, I know. He, he doesn't fucking stop. You know, it's 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 really not hard to stop when someone says no. No, it's not. I've I've done it when someone changed their mind or something. It's not yeah. like you don't keep going, dude. You just all right, fine. You know, oh, wait, you are you okay? Food? I say no. <laughs> you know, well, no, you never say no to Gert because Gert demands a. Uh, <laughs> Gert, Gert demands food. Yes. <laughs> My biggest baby. You're so good. Aww, um, <laughs> so, so speaking of food, why don't you cover K- Kirsty and Larry um eating dinner together? Sure. Gert's like dinner? Well, dinner. you've had uh you've had father-daughter uh dinners and I have not, so I figure you would be better to discuss the scene. Okay, yes. Um so he wishes he didn't leave Brooklyn. Um uh, they're talking about Julia and the real problem here, kiddo. He says, kiddo, see, like my dad. <laughs> and, and, and then the they Julia... go to CBS, the movie yes. ends. Yes. Julia doesn't want to leave the house. Like, she's acting really fucking weird. Like, she's waiting for something. Um, um, and wants her to stop by sometime and, like, really try and make friends with Julia. And she just needs someone to talk to. Um, yeah. So to, she wants to find someone else to bring home. Julia does. And Kirstie's like randomly there and sees this and is awfully flirty. Um, she oh she she's spying on him with the third dude. Yes. Yeah. Um. So and it's just like she after he goes in the house, there's like that shot of Julia like looking looking to make sure that no one's there, and I'm like Kirstie's very obviously in the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you fucked that up, man. I actually feel bad for the third guy. Why? He seems so pathetic. Like he's like just oh, yeah. has the saddest life, and now his life is going to end being like fucking like goozled by fucking Frank. <laughs> goozled, I yes. like that. Yeah, it's a um, Tim Cornette phrase. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she sees like Julia sees that um the or but Kirsty sees that Julia and the dude go in the house, and they go into a different room. Uh, Kirsty's trying to go upstairs. She sees the guy happy and in this room. And goes for his hand um, because he pops out of there. And Larry comes out, scares the shit out of Kirsty, or not Larry, Frank, Frank, Frank comes out and kills kills this man. And then we get the Franks come to daddy thing. Well, you're growing yeah. beautiful. You have nothing to be afraid of. Um, make daddy. You're gonna what? Make daddy so proud. Um, you, I don't you know. must make dad. You must make your daddy so proud. You're Ugh. so beautiful. Some things that have to be have to be endured, and that's what makes the pleasure so sweet. And I just, I love that she grabs his insides. Yeah. Um, and she touches the Hellraiser box. Uh, mm-hmm. And she says, "No, you want that? Fine, you want it?" And she throws it out the window. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then she goes after it and takes it as she runs. And I realize this is another m- movie moment where. If this was in the days of cell phones, Larry would have survived to the end of the film. Yep. So she would have just immediately called him. Yep. It's true. And it's really interesting, too, like, because she walks past these two nuns. And it's one of those things where I looked up and, like, are those nuns anybody important? Are they, like... And apparently they're just extras. But it's so... They're so prominent that it feels like a cameo. It's true. It's true. It, it, it feels like are those like Clyde Barker's sisters or something? Like you know, like priest on the swing and in, in body yeah. Sisters. Yes, which I found out by the way. Uh, so Robert Duvall um, did not even get paid for that. What he isn't credited and he isn't paid. He literally was just on um, a set the uh, the the next studio over. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. And and uh, he was and he was like a really big fan of the original and was like, oh my god, you're shooting a remake. That's awesome. Um, uh, and and the director was like, "Do you want to be in it?" And he's like, "Sure." Kurt's like, "Can I be in it?" <laughs> and apparently, like, they were trying to figure out what he would be, and they had like just a uh, a I guess maybe 
someone maybe an extra who was supposed to be a priest didn't show up or something and so yeah, just put him in a priest costume. yeah they're like here you go and um so yeah he's not credited for that and he didn't get paid for it wow yeah he worked for free just so he could be in the uh remake well i love that yeah um but yeah that but yeah like the, that's the thing those two nuns are so prominent it feels like they're like they're real it that that's the type of shit we would be like oh man wouldn't it be funny if like we put your brother in like you know what i mean like yeah like yeah. jeremiah has a cameo like that in Teresa and allison he does yes oh when ariel walks past there's a dude she walks past and it's jeremiah oh, yeah yeah as one does what about gert gert you'll be in the next thing don't worry <laughs> so um and you know and that's the thing i was realizing that all she had to do if she had a cell phone is just Call her dad and say, don't even say Fr Frank has no flesh. Just be like, Frank is here. So she passes out. Chelsea is on the, uh, has, there she goes. She's putting her yeah, headphones yeah. in. I, I was just, to to I was just, I was just <laughs> talking nonstop shit about you during that the whole time. But right. um, so she passes out and people with dub voices ask if she's all right. Because there's some very obvious ADR here. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. She wakes, she wakes she, up in the hospital. Yeah. With the nurse watching flowers bloom. Yeah. There, it, feel, it, it feels like a dream sequence. It really does. And I think it's so fucked up that she won't even answer her questions about like, how did I get here? And it's like, oh, I'm going to go get the doctor. And the doctor's a fucking prick. Yeah. Like, that guy should not be a doctor. Yeah. He has the box. You were hanging on to it like grim death. Yeah. I fucking hate him. But I thought I recognized that actor. From mm. something. From the something. love boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is probably a movie. Is that a movie? It probably is. It was a TV show in the 70s and 80s. Oh, the love it. boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, gone. <laughs> this is fucking. This is a blue light. The Basically, the walls open. Um, yeah. I so do like the little pink sperm that emerged from the box when she plays with it, though. Yes. It's pretty gross. Yes. Yes. It's pretty nasty. Yeah. Very sexual. Everything. Yes. This is a teenager. Oh wait, no, she's supposed to be nineteen, right? That's fine. Um, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, no, I. Really I didn't check her ID. <laughs> 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 uh, so the wall breaks open. This blue light comes, and she goes down this crazy tunnel, and she can hear a baby crying in the distance, and then this. The, the whatever the, the fuck engineer the engineer i was gonna call him the entertainer and i was gonna start singing billy joel but it's too late for that <laughs> um the, i am the it's entertainer. the piano man it's the, it's the piano man oh no so it's that, a the, crazy honestly, giant monster i will say the piano man sounds like a fucking it sounds like a modern fucking like horror movie where there's some little kid who like is scared of this man who emerges from a fucking piano, like, Maybe and no one be. believes the little kid. You know, it should be. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'd really, Joel, write it. You know, I was well. You know about um in the poly relationship I used to be in. Obviously, I won't name them, but you know the um one of them uh, was driving Long Island and was cut off by Billy Joel, and. That. Yeah, on the LIE, and uh, was actually going, was was trying to catch up with Billy Joel to give him the finger. And I was explaining, I was like, oh my god, don't give Billy Joel the finger in fucking Long Island, like the fucking piano men show up at your at your house one night. <laughs> and you're never, you. you're never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. Yes. That. Yeah, yes. this is a great new idea for a movie. Yes, the piano man. So there yeah. you go. Honestly, yeah. if anyone wants to steal, feel free because I ain't gonna fucking write that. Um, so if Chelsea wants to, then you then rush off and copyright that because otherwise, I'm not using that fucking idea. I don't want to be sued by Billy Joel. Yeah. That's well, terrible. I'd like to sing with Billy Joel. There's no offense. Yeah. I think that it's children. There's the eldest daughter. I do not like her voice at all, and she always she always goes on stage with him. I'm like, but shoot. I have, I have, I'm, I'm bothered that I even know the lyrics to Piano Man or, or several Billy Joel songs having lived in Long Island for too many years. Yeah. 
Because yeah. it's 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 inescapable, and I fucking it's like it's like my I love my, Billy Joel. He does not. <laughs> yeah, like I will say, for example, a certain uh, person I know who might work for a particular um, thing that represents people um, mm -hmm. might have had an encounter with Chris Christie, where because um, Chris Christie might have been represented by a place this person might work, and. <laughs> um, hypothetically chris christie might have asked everyone in the office what their favorite springsteen song was and um this person i know might have said i don't have one and then might have been told well then you'll never be governor of new jersey kid <laughs> yeah well that's true <laughs> it's definitely true yeah that's so funny. um kirsty runs back to the um the hospital bed she grabs the box and uh she uh jesus christ uh there's <laughs> the cameo here is not even a the, the cameo the fucking uh typo i made is not even a word I it, do that it, all the time. it literally looks like just fucking like lovecraftian chanting yeah. like from girl or bug girl neath <laughs> perfect yeah perfect. The fuck so um you know, and then she solves the puzzle, and uh, we see Chatterer, uh, we see Pinhead, we see Butterball, the box, you opened it, we came. Uh, so good. Yeah, it's just a puzzle box. It means it's, it is a means to summon us. Who are you explorers in the further regions of experience? Demons to some, angels to others. It was a mistake. Yeah, go I to you. <laughs> yeah, go to hell. Oh, we can't go alone. Taste our pleasures. <laughs> no that. tears, please. It's a waste of good <laughs> suffering. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote goof shuddering. My typos are hilarious, isn't it? That's My friend gross. Who was <laughs> <laughs> That's just gross. My friend who I was watching this movie with. I was thinking about because I have like you know fucking twenty pages, forty pages of notes for every movie that yeah. we do. And they were talking about how you know you're going through writing your dissertation, and you know they publish notes of people who are like experts on these things. You should do that. <laughs> I'm like, you don't want these notes. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want these notes. I, I wrote goof shuddering. <laughs> so silly. Oh, no, I'm crying. Um, yeah, so she, so she basically, they're about to take her to hell, but she, uh, she basically makes a deal with them that, yeah, that uh, Frank is alive. yeah, if they give him, because Frank escaped from them, so she'll give them Frank, and um, you know, but they never actually agree to not take her. It is true. It's Pinhead gives a maybe. We'll tear your soul apart. Yeah, yeah, well, if she cheat, if the cheater, if you cheat us, we'll tear your soul apart. But um, yeah. but she says if uh, if Frank confesses, um, then maybe, maybe, God, I've done too many fucking pinhead impersonations. Uh, that was really good. It's like terrifying. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. I listened. I listened to an old episode recently, and I was like, I forgot I even do a Nicolas Cage impersonation. <laughs> um, where you were like, okay, that's scary. Don't do that. <laughs> During the Wicker Man. I had forgotten I even did it, fucking Nicolas Cage, because I've never done a Nicolas Cage impersonation until that podcast. I, apparently, it must have been good enough where I like. Yeah, it. yeah, where you were like, "Don't do that again, that friend." Me, <laughs> yeah. like you know, Pinhead. <laughs> I've been doing that voice since I was a fucking kid, but you know, fucking uh, Nicolas Cage, I, I've never attempted except for the uh, "I'm a vampire," but uh, <laughs> I'm a vampire. I'm Not a vampire. Yeah. So um, Julia is now worried uh, that uh, Kirsty will call the police, and uh, you know Frank proposes killing Larry. Yes, and, but she doesn't want that. He wants her to tell Larry now. What I care about is the new skin. I love that. We can't stay here. She, she, he knows that my brother will be home soon. He knows that somehow. Um, <laughs> now my note doesn't make any sense <laughs> at all. She right here. He there. That's what I wrote. What does that mean, Joe? Well, here's, I was going to say, here's where um, 
you know, they do kill Larry. Um, when she says, tells Larry there's something for you to see, and it's best he sees for himself. Okay, that's what that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So Larry uh, goes bye-bye, and you don't see it. I kind of wish that you saw it. Yeah. You probably just well, no, it's supposed to, it's Somehow it's supposed to be a surprise that uh, even though Larry's entire hairline is bleeding. Um, it... Yes, yes. So she's gone. Of course, she's gone from the hospital. She went to dad's house. Julia's by the mirror. Um, she killed Larry. She's fucking Frank. Kirstie comes in. Um, Julia answers the door. I want to see my father. Of course. Of course. And she's like hesitant to do that. So she's obviously scared. Um, uh, I wrote Larry's still there. Wait, his head is all fucked up. He's definitely Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. She so, tells. Yeah. Because she's like trying to warn it. her dad. Yeah. She's trying to warn her dad that Frank is here and he's trying to kill you. Yeah, it's like she doesn't even she doesn't even notice that his hairline is all fucking fucked. Yeah, that would kind of be my first question is, oh my god, what happened to you? Are you all right? Did Frank do something to you? Yeah, like definitely acting very, very different. Yeah. Um uh she wants to go to the police to make him understand. She doesn't understand herself. Did she hurt and he asks he's like, now he's playing along. Did he hurt you, baby? No, I'm okay. It's better oh they're they're saying that Frank is dead. Um, uh, yeah, well, the, the thing is, the, you're 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 glossing over one of my favorite things here. When Andrew yeah. Robinson as Frank now, um, when he's like, um, whatever Frank did was unspeakable, and he's like looking at like him and and Kurt and uh, Julia kind of just look at each other like they have like a he he he, you know, <laughs> and he's like unspeakable. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No. Yeah. But he yeah, he basically job. he basically tells her that uh that he killed Frank and that it's okay now. And uh he'll go to the police and try to make them understand, but God knows I don't really understand myself. Mm-hmm. He's better off dead though. Poor Frank. Yes, and she's totally not buying it. She yeah. Says, well well she is crazy. at this point. She is. She's yes. buying it until he starts getting rapey. Yes. Which uh, I'm just like. Frank, you can't fucking control yourself. Yeah, you were literally, you look like his, her fucking father right now. Like, you got yeah. you got a gun. You gotta not do that. So she demands yeah. that she needs to see him, to see Frank, to understand that he's dead. And of course, Frank's body is, like, disintegrating. Um, well, that, yeah, that's Larry's body that's disintegrating in there. Yes, it's Larry's yeah. body, yes. And yeah. so Julia locks the door on her in the weird, in the weird mold room, the moldy room, as you put it. Uh, and the Cenobites show up, and they want the man who did this. He's my father. You can't have him know. And um, uh, Julia stops her from running away. And she, Julia, didn't she? Did she strangle Kirsty? Um, yeah, she grabbed her by the neck at one point. That's 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 in a little bit. That's in a little bit. Okay. Um, but cause, yeah, because she and Julia fight in the hallway, and and uh, you know, that's where Frank um actually says, "Come to daddy," to her. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know she scratches at Frank, and Frank is gonna do his little flesh stealing shit, but um, she gets out of the way and he stabs Julia, and mm-hmm. so that's when he's like, "So much for the cat and mouse shit." And then he goes to stab Kirsty, but he stabs Julia, and then he uses her to recover, and is like, "Nothing personal, baby." I love that so much. Nothing yeah. personal, baby. Turns and goes for Kirsty, and she runs back upstairs. And she's like, come out wherever you are. Um, and that's when I wrote, you never learn what's in the center door on the top floor. <laughs> yeah. You know what occurred to me here is that, like, you know, okay, the Cenobites disappear to lure F- Frank in there. But, you know, the first time you watch this, it's kind of, you know, and I, and I remember thinking this when I first watched this. I'm like, wait, so the demons in her room are just going to patiently wait there while t- the rest of this movie is going on? But yeah, they kind of disappear to 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 uh, fuck with Frank. But um, but it is funny, like, when you think of it that way. It's like, oh, well, I guess they're just very polite and don't want to leave those women. Like, they're very polite Cenobites. I mean, sadomasochism, yes. the masochism part's there, too. They have to wait. They force them yes. To, yes. They, they oh, believe they, in safe, insane murder. <laughs> uh, safe, con- to, safe consensual, to, insane murder. <laughs> yes. They go to the future and they so that they can get a cell phone to, and download the app Pill Finder. And then, then they come yeah. back. That's it. That's, that's the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. 
So um, <laughs> Kirsty's hiding, and one of the corpses, Julia, um, left just spills maggots all over her. Yep. Oh, that's what. That's what I was wondering who the fuck that was. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the guys that uh, that Frank killed. Okay. Okay. I think it might have been his first victim. That would make that would make sense. Yeah. You know, it really hits, but also that would have smelled. I, I, no one knows in this movie works except Julia. Yeah, yeah. She's literally the only one who comments on anything smelling in this film. Yes, that's true. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And, um, you know, so Frank uh, sneaks out because Julia, Kirsty does a dumb thing where she manages to get out of that room and then she just stays in a stationary position and cries instead of running down the stairs. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's when Frank sneaks out and he grabs her and he takes her in the moldy room uh, where the Cenobites mm -hmm. are no longer there and she trips over Father's corpse and he's like, don't mourn him. He was dead long before we ever touched him. Hush now. Everything's all I right. Uh, Uncle, Frank's Uncle here. Uncle Frank is here. Yeah. Which amounts to a confession. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is Frank asks, what the hell is this when the lights on the walls start happening, which... Frank should know exactly what that fucking is. I know. That was really concerning. I was just like, bitch, you went through this already. We have yeah. been here before, Mr. Man. Yeah, Wait. if I were Frank, if I were Frank, not if I was playing Frank, if I were really Frank at that point, I'd be like, oh, I fuck, fuck raping my fucking niece. I'm running the fuck out I of this building. Out of here. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah. Yeah. So, like, the fucking Cenobites are coming back in, the body parts come back up, or the body parts with the chain link and everything. He's in um chains are everywhere he's, he's backed into something <laughs> um uh curse pinhead says to Kirsty, this isn't for your eyes which i love that you know that's kind of cute what's what's interesting here and once again this is just first time filmmaker stuff the continuity is a little off at the beginning of the scene yeah because it's it, it looks like either different time periods or different rooms Mm -hmm. Like the lighting is the lighting different. Is so different. Yeah. The lighting is different. Where the cha the where the chains are in physical space is different. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. But I figure that's once again, it's just first time filmmaker. Like yeah. you know, con it's it's you know, if Cl I think if Clive Barker had not stopped making films after his second movie, he probably would have been doing some pretty amazing stuff by now. Mm -hmm. Totally, you know, totally. not that this isn't an amazing film, but I mean, you know, like I said, there's definitely some errors that only a first time filmmaker would have made. Yeah, 100%. Who stinky farts peanut? Jesus Christ. The, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no. So the uh, I wrote Frank and Larry, like Frankenstein, but Frank and Larry. <laughs> yes. um, um, you set me up, bitch. Um, he gets pulled back in and pulled apart. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Wet. <laughs> yeah. When you laugh. Which, once again, I wonder how many times Andrew Robinson gets paid to say that at uh, at conventions. Oh, at conventions, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about it too. It's so weird that he was under that he was under Deep Space Nine at that convention instead of like you and know, Hellraiser. Yeah, Hellraiser. That's they had a picture of Larry there, but it, Larry is such a suburban dad-looking character. It's not like it really sticks out. Yeah, so weird. But that's you know, so, yeah, but uh. Yeah, and uh, so Kirsty runs, uh, you know, um, and you know, I do kind of also love that Kurt, that Frank, even though he's been captured, is clearly still getting off on being torn apart. Oh yeah, the pain and the pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I'm like you get to experience it again. Fuck you. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, at one point, uh, Kirsty goes to leave, and the female centibite is in front of her, and she's scraping the walls, and they bleed. Um. And uh, she sees uh, Julia's in bed with the box. She pries the box out of Julia's cold, dead hands. Mm -hmm. And Pinhead's behind it. We have such sights to show you. I, I love that line so much. Yeah. And um, I've said that to people about various things. Too. Um, so she starts solving the puzzle. She tells him to go to hell as the house begins to fall apart. Um, uh, <laughs> what's his face is at the door. Um, Steve. Uh, <laughs> the boy, Steve. Steve. Steve yeah. Um, and uh, meanwhile, Chatterer is there making a beautiful bride with the veil on. You know, um, and uh, she uses the box. She makes him disappear. 
Uh, Steve is there. Uh, Butterball is behind him, but the ceiling, all the the Cenobites. It's funny that Chatterer and Butterball are what those other two Cenobites are called, when the other one's lead Cenobite and female Cenobite. Oh, so they actually had names. Yes, Chatterer and but and Butterball. Um, oh, yeah. So at this point, um, Kirsty and what's his face are hugging among the asbestos. As you do. Uh, yeah, the door is an opening and the box is transforming, and then the engineer comes in from outside the door. Mm-hmm. Kirsty's trying to solve the puzzle. Steve is completely useless, where he's like, <laughs> you know, turn it that way. And like, fuck you, Steve. Fuck yeah, like, you. Fuck up, Steve. Like, <laughs> she's so deliberately like, fuck you, Steve. As well, she's yeah. So she makes she solves the box and just keeps sending everyone back to hell or whatever. Yeah. So here, and once again, another, another, this is only, and you know, for only like three really noticeable continuity errors, it's not really that bad, but um, it looks like the sun comes up, um, but then from the lighting and then the next shot, it's still night. Yep. I wrote that down too. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So Steve gives his, gives her his jacket so that he can show off that his, um, his, his taste in clothing is as bad as his fucking character. Yeah. Um, no, and the house is burning to the ground. And yep. No fire department shows up. Nope. Nope. We, they don't have those in uh, wherever they are. Yeah. Um, and so uh, <laughs> there's uh, the bonfires in front of her. Kirsty puts the box in one just so I guess anybody can find it and summon demons. And, um, Anybody can summon demons. And then that homeless yeah. guy shows up and takes it and lights yep. himself on fire. He reaches into the fire, pulls out the box. His whole body starts burning. He turns into a demon um, that I assume was a very expensive demon because we only see it for about two seconds. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in fact, I know it's an expensive demon because I had originally, remember the original script, I had something like that. And then it was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is this is literally going to cost like another four days of shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we dropped it. But, you know, um, and then we see the box is back in Morocco. Uh, with some other dude there, and uh, we end the movie with "What is your pleasure, sir?" How did the box wind up back in? The demon put it there. The demon put it there. Okay. Yeah. Although part um part two and the subsequent films reveal there's more than one box. Right. I knew that. Yeah, the Cenobites are part of um the order of uh, God. I know way too much about fucking Hellraiser fucking lore. Um, the Cenobites are part of like a religious order in Hell. They're the order of the Gash. Cool. Um, and there's actually like there's like a, there's at least dozens, if not hundreds, of Cenobites. Oh. We just have only seen like those, you know, ones that we've seen in the movies, but there's way more. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, this movie's fucking awesome. Yeah. They um I should also note by the way that uh Frank, um, one of the reasons why um there is some bad um ADR is that when Frank is fleshless, that's a completely different actor than regular Frank. I figured, yeah. Yeah, they got a, they got a way skinnier guy to play a fle- a fleshless Frank. Yes, they did. I just wanted everyone to see the monster. Again. Yeah. Aww. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> no, force <yeah>. love, force love. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I also bye. love, I also <laughs> kind of love um, watching the thing with um, uh, the the making of and uh, so they said Pinhead is supposed to be someone who's seen everything and is bored of everything. Yeah, it it kind of makes sense. Yeah, and it does kind of come through on that. And and I and I I do I love so much about this movie. Um, but it had a one million dollar budget. Mm-hmm. It made a uh, forty five million dollars at the box office. <laughs> Casual. You know. Um, and um. Then they wanted to call it Hellbound, um, but um, the producer suggested Hellraiser instead. And um, you know, and I and I love Clyde Barker. Even talked about being a first time uh, uh, filmmaker. Um, he admitted his own lack of knowledge of filmmaking, saying that he didn't know the difference between a ten millimeter lens and a thirty five millimeter lens. If you had shown me a plate of spaghetti and said that with the lens, I might have believed you. <laughs> 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 yeah, he cute. says he says the cast treated my ineptitudes kindly and the crew were no less forgiving. 
makes me happy. Yeah. Um, apparently, the Chinese food, uh, the restaurant with Kirsty and Larry, was mm -hmm. a very rushed shoot because the, the person who was supposed to let cast and crew in there was late. Oh. So they all had to rush to get it done before the place had to open. And they had to, they had to, because they had like a heart out and this person was late to let them in. Damn. Yeah. And uh, apparently the box itself was so delicate that um, the special effects designer uh, would lay on the floor under the Cenobites anytime they were holding the box um, in okay. case any of them dropped it because it, it took them eight hours to make it. Wow. I wonder where yeah. is this Hellraiser box? Like, where is the prop? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it's somewhere. Yeah, I want to find um, it. And also, as I um, I played for you, um, uh, so the original, you know, Hellraiser, like, it has just this iconic score from Christopher Young mm -hmm. um, that you and I talked about when we talk about Hellraiser 4, uh -huh. about how it's missing that for most of the film. Um, and then when you get to the straight to video ones, they didn't have the rights to it anymore and it's completely fucking useless. Right. But, um, that was not Clyde Barker's first choice. It was originally from Coil, which are the band from, uh, uh, John Balance of Psychic, uh, of Psychic TV. And, um, I don't know. It's not bad per se. I mean, you can find it on there. YouTube, but it's, it feels very generic. It feels like just, I, I any other fucking just horror movie like score yeah yeah like th there's nothing special about it's it not while bad. like it's not bad. no it's not bad but there's nothing like that stands out about it and you know meanwhile like hellraiser's like the orchestral score is just beautiful it's so gorgeous yeah yeah no it's awesome this movie yeah. is just if you haven't seen it you're really fucking up your life yeah <laughs> so it's um you know, I just I, and finally, I just wanted to quote um, Clyde Barker here just because. Um, uh, yeah. And as I said, they did a lot of um, overdubbing to get rid of English voices uh, mm -hmm. when they relocated it to America. Um, but I just I love Clyde Barker's quote about, well, we did have some a slight problem with the eroticism. I shot a much hotter flashback sequence than they allow us to cut in. Mine was more explicit and less violent. They wanted to substitute one kind of undertow for another. I had much more explicit sexual counter between Frank and Julia. They said, no, let's take out the sodomy and put in the, the flick knife. We did a version of the scene that had some spanking in it, and the MPAA was not very appreciative of that. Lord knows where the spanking footage is. Somebody had it somewhere. The MPAA told me I was allowed two consecutive buttock thrusts from Frank, but three is deemed obscene. Oh my god! Yeah, no, there. I if you ever want to just spend some time being annoyed at how uh, like pedantic the MPAA is, um, they are like yeah. that. Where they're literally like, "Oh no, you can't have three thrusts." You know, if he's doing her in the butt, and it can only be two, and like just all sorts of shit like that that leads to weird edits, and it's. And it's interesting now because now in the days of streaming, the MPAA don't really have as much power as they used to at all. It's true. No, they don't at all. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's one that's Great one of the that. that's one of the best things about streaming. I mean, because even when, when we did Teresa and Allison, Jeremiah and I talked about like, God, how much of this film would we have to cut if we had to submit to the MPAA? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And same for Bishop's Cove. Probably same for 90% of the things I will make for the rest of my career, unless yep. I get like a lucrative, you know, fucking Disney want me to do a Marvel film. Okay, I'll make a PG-13 movie. No problem. Or yep. fucking, you know, what is it? A24 or any of those were like, hey, make something. Okay, I can play nice with other people's, you know, when I'm in somebody else's house. Give me a million dollars, it's going to be great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but while I'm in my own house, you know, where either you and I or me and, and whatever, we're making our own stuff. There will um, be chaos. Yeah, they, exactly. I'll, 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 I'm going to do five buttock thrusts. How do you like that, MPAA? Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. Um, so anyway, yeah, this has hilarious. been... 1980, yeah, Clive Barker's Hellraiser from 1987. And then next week, we will be doing the remake, uh, which you can find on Hulu, the, the 2022 remake. Have I seen that? I don't think so. You have not. You okay. have not. 
because uh, I remember when it first came out, you didn't have time to see it, and um, it kind of got lost by the wayside. Mm -hmm. It okay. was actually part of the reason why, when, when we were thinking of themes, why I went with this one was so that I could eventually mm -hmm. talk about that movie with you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. So that'll be well, all, that, that, and, that and also the uh, film we'll be doing afterwards, which I'm not going to say what it is, but it's because you've seen it and you've seen both versions and I have not. I have not okay. seen either. Okay. And you, I think you know which movie I'm talking about now. It's in another language, the original version. Um, oh, yes. 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 Because that's the thing. I was like, well, let's see. We have one movie with two remakes that I have seen either the remake or the original. And then we have one that you have not seen the remake for. So fuck it. Let's do that as a theme. See, we've taken you behind the scenes. Anyway. Yes, you're learning how our, how our brains work. Yes. Anyway. So yeah. uh, where can people find you, Chelsea? You can find me at Chelsea.Lesage on Instagram. You can also, again, go to Cameo and look up Chelsea.Lesage. And where can they find you, Charles? I can be found on Instagram at Charles.D.Lincoln. And you can contribute to my Patreon, which will help the cause of independent film by going to patreon.com slash Charles D. Lincoln, one word. Yes, and then you can find you can us find together. Find us together. Uh, Tales Court Productions on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And again, uh, you can find Cinematic Autopsy on Facebook now as well. Very exciting. Yep, as a cinematic, just look up uh, Charles and Chelsea's Cinematic Autopsy. It's there. Mm -hmm. It's there. All right, yeah, and you can we'll find out. Yeah, you can find up updates to us, and um, I even posted a link to the original uh, Coil uh, score for Hellraiser. So, yeah. uh, any of you want to know what we were talking about? Uh, go on there, subscribe, and subscribe to all our shit, all of it. Yeah, what are you doing? Get yeah, on come <laughs> to daddy. Anyway, so come to daddy. I'm just going to say that to people. Come to daddy. You say it to everyone. Yes, just ever yeah. say it to well, your thank dad. You guys. <laughs> and then no, he'll be like, come to, Then he'll be like, come to CBS. There CBS, you go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you guys alrighty, for everybody. Listening. Thanks a I'm lot. I'm going to go poop again. <laughs> All right. I'm sure our audience is excited about that. <laughs> speaking yeah. of uh speaking of germany anyway so uh <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, see you all later bye, bye.